unmuted, doing Oops. the damn thing. Ruined it already. You, you that's you. Swag, swags, swags, swags. Take it off, swags. I'm not starting until you take it off. Why? <laughs> All right. Here we go. You ready? Go like that, like. No, I'm, I'm not worried about it. What's going on, friends? It's Friday night vape stew night. We're not muted. We started at nine o'clock on the dot, and uh, yeah, I want you guys to. I've been pregame a little bit. We got Swags and Nick Bissett here in the house this evening. Demo decided that he didn't want to be the designated guest for the evening. So, you guys sit back, grab your favorite beverage, uh, grab your favorite vape, and enjoy the show. Hang out with us. It's going to be fun. My name's Stan, and you have found the Tenacious TX Vape Channel. Whoops. Warning! longest intro ever all right so uh say what's up panel and what? or or s- s- turn it off swaggins <laughs> <laughs> say hello <What's> up? <clears throat> best low budget entrance ever it looks like you have an orange afro now mm-hmm. he does have an orange afro <laughs> have you ever seen swaggins afro when he actually had hair yeah it was amazing. Maybe we should Thank tell you. everybody where they can see that, Swaggins. Oh. Uh, I was an extra in Super Troopers, the first <laughs> one. Hey, you know what? It's Friday night. We're going to have a good time tonight. Um, you guys in chat, why don't we roll through real quick and say what's up, 808 Kevin? What's going on, Joseph Walters, Kid Base? Um, Danny Castle, Clayton Von Kluge says, Vapes do! Um, Frames Janklin Vapor, <laughs> Louis Nicolette, thank you to all of the wrenches that are here this evening. Overdrip says he's impressed with our showing up on time. I'm glad that how it's supposed to be impresses you. Um, Kip Drippers, what's going on, dude? Alex Davila, what's up? Uh, Vaping Life with Vaping Jason, what's going on? Gary the Great, Von Bass. Uh, Lando, savor the Orlando. vapor. <laughs> savor the vapor. What's up? I think his name might be Landon. Um, Ricky Mahoney says, "I'm down to be yelling and rocking out terrible electronic music at 11." Um, Texas Cloud Towns in the house. Oh, our church. What is up? Uh, who else? Ho bag. What's up, dude? Steven Garlington, my man, is the new Coheed and Cambria song? No, this is not the new Coheed and Cambria song. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's get to the top here. Vaping Brewer, what's going on? It's not 915. You are correct, sir. Nick Pinkerton, what's up, dude? Billy Ancio. Nick Pinkerton is here to troll the hell out of me. Uh, Mitch Hogart, what's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So uh, let's get right to it. Um, <clears throat> okay, all right. I'm not really Nick Bissett. <laughs> so, Nick, it, what what happened to you? What is going on with you this evening? Why did you try to back out of the show? Oh, first of all, fuck you, <laughs> man. Well, I'm just after asking, show, you showed up. I'm just asking. I didn't try to back out. I'm just, I tried to explain. I wanted to, I wanted some information, which I really didn't get. I didn't even get an answer to. And, I don't know what juice this is. And basically I was just asking if it was our week off this week because I uh, went to the dentist the other day and I need a root canal Ugh. and I have an infected molar on this side. So basically I'm on amoxicillin and... Plug it in. 
Was it in pain before you went to the dentist? Oh, big time. So that's like, why you went to the dentist because it wasn't just a checkup. It was like you were in no, pain. It was, uh, I can't sleep. I'm in so much pain. I wake up every two to three hours and like eat. Uh, freaking I have to go to the dentist. I don't want to go to the dentist. Yeah. I changed I my mind. I don't want to know why you weren't almost here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and I, I saw an x-ray of my tooth and there's a big ass hole in my tooth. And there's a lot of swelling in my jaw area. So feels like someone socked me in the face. Really good. Way to let that one go. Nick. Do you want to hit me? You want me to hit you on the other side? Make you forget about that one? Oh, that's such a dad thing to say. I know. My grandpa used to say it to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh, what's this so, one? What's this? So that's why I'm not in, uh, enjoying a beverage this evening. I have some water and I have my drugs <laughs> prescribed. Um, so yeah, sweet. What are you vaping on? Lando says Nick crying again. Screw you, Lando. Where you been at in the streams, boy? Uh, boy. I am. I, ju I was literally just on Twitch streaming some uh, new modern warfare, by the way, and I will be streaming that quite a bit in the next few days. Um, but I am vaping just the twister kit today because I'm oh too lazy God. to set anything else up. And I haven't done a single video this week because I've been in so much pain and I'm just rocking the blast peach in here. So I know Overdrip loves this mod. So I'm just going to show it off. Have you tried peeling that uh, sticker off yet? I don't want it's to. hydro blasted. Oh, I kind of <laughs> like it. Hydro dipped swaggins. Hydro, oh, you need yeah, to understand well, manufacturing Hydro Blasted looks way cooler. <laughs> sounds cooler. Yeah, it looks cooler, too. It sounds like a, a squirt gun. Yes. Hydro Blast. Hydro. <laughs> New probably from is, Tyco. Probably is like a super soaker called Hydro from Blamco. <laughs> Blamco. <laughs> Wait, you just said you couldn't vape, but now you're vaping like because of your tooth? Am I wrong? You don't want to get dry socket. No, it didn't get an extraction. Like, it's... The tooth is still in there. I need well, been chill. a root Thanks canal. for the one quid. Oh, you're not drinking because of the Let's the have alcohol. live vape and I'm chill. I'm not drinking because I'm on antibiotics. Because of the pills, right. Right. <clears throat> live vape and chill needs to come on right now. Come on, baby. Live vape and chill. Get your ass in here. Dude, it's 3 a.m. and they're at Expo. Send him a link. Uh, let us know how. Yeah, send him a link. Thank you for the one pound live. They were trying we got to get a yeah. link to get in here to the show. Um, first and foremost, I want to say, guys, this does not stop. 202-456-1111 or 1414. Make sure you guys are calling. Make sure you guys tell them we vape, we vote. November 9th, I will be there at the rally. Um, if you guys can put the route, that's a link I should have told y'all guys about the moderators, um, the rally information. If you guys can drop that link in the chat, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, November 9th, that is happening. There will be a lot of people there. I got a round trip ticket for 150 bucks. I'm going to say that to everybody because that was awesome. And there was a cheaper ticket available. So, uh, yeah, I, it's pretty, it can be pretty affordable if you can't make it. That, that's just how the world turns. But if you can make it, definitely be there. If you can't make it, make sure you're uh, reposting and, and putting out information on social media and calling and talking to your representatives. Even if you are going, still do that. It's all important. It's all a big deal. Um, things are crazy in the media right now, positive and negative. Uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of a big deal. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. History in the making. Um. <clears throat> Hey, thanks for the great sale. You're welcome, man bug. LucidRDA.com is having a 40% off sale and a tandem 25% off sale. 40% 40, 40 off for Black October is the code for all of the stand design stuff, almost all of it, uh, including like solid silver and stuff like that for the dreamers. Um, <clears throat> and 25% off with code Get It Now. Uh, they do not work. You can't stack them, but you can place two orders and use both if you want to. Uh, so, yeah. Boom, swaggin'. Did you say Blacktober? Black October. <laughs> All right. Blacktober won't work. You have to do the full Black October. One word, all capitals. Lando, you got cold. You seriously got told to stop calling this morning? Dude, I would call back like 15 more times just really? because of that. Really? That's, That's awesome. Amazing. Keep well, calling me. I man. mean, within reason. It's like, it's like, your name's not Lando. Dolores? 
Lando, is that you again? <laughs> hey, yeah, I just how, did I get your, how did I get you the last 12 times in a row? <laughs> Swaggins, what are you vaping just on? just calls 37 times a day. Um, yeah, so basically I'm vaping on a few things. I pulled this guy out. This is the Titan box. Maybe you remember it. I just it sold came my... out all the way back in two years ago. Um, yeah, it's a dual parallel. Is that a Jenna on top? Yeah, with a Jenna on top. <clears throat> it's it's glorious. Oh, you're um, in bed at 3 a.m. at a show live vape and chill. You are definitely not doing it right. Go sorry, to bed. Sorry, 5150 ahead. Skull Candy. That's a whipped lemon meringue pie. Morong. Morong. Uh, next, if you've seen any of the other shows I've done this week, then you've seen this multiple times. But in the spirit of liberty, freedom, transparency, and the Power Rangers, I am vaping on um, this right here. <laughs> this is the Stratum Zero Mini, a little MOSFET at 18350 mech uh, with the Cape on Prime on top. Inside of there, I've got 5150. Um straight jacket and 12 milligram which is an oak barrel butter salted butterscotch custard cream one of these days i'll get it right at least i can i can remember it at this point and then i mean and then i'm vaping on this this is a clz <clears throat> Juma. it's a squonker it's got a it's got a skyfall on top there's juice all over it what's inside of there it's tango melon is inside of there of course <laughs> my Did you even have to ask? Um, and I'm vaping on a couple more things. And if you're really curious, you can um, email uh, vapestew at gmail.com with last week's secret phrase, and I'll send you pictures. Thank you. That's me. Back to you, Stan. Why don't you check that email, Swaggins, while you're at it? Uh, thank you very oh. much, Swags. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha. You have to work. Um, okay. So. Let me see. Let me see here. Let me see here. I'm going to type something here real quick. I wonder if that, that was the, like my most relaxed buffet. Okay. So there has been a whole lot of stuff happening on, uh, on Twitter and in the industry. As you guys know, <clears throat> it's kind of become a thing for us to give you a couple things that we have seen throughout the weeks. Uh, so, so, or throughout the week. So we're going to talk about a little bit of those. We might talk a little bit about a product drop that's happening um, that people have mixed feelings about. So we'll talk about that. Um, what else? Oh, and we have a little a little something. We're going to get to know the, the Stooges. We're going to get to know the panel a little bit here. <laughs> what? We're going to get to know the panel a little bit with a question in a little, in a, in a little okay. while. In a little All right, while. cool. So... <clears throat> First and foremost, did you guys see the Dead Rabbit V2 video today? No. Vaping Heathen. Are you going to braid those? Or, I'm sorry, to. Heathen. Who's that? Well, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm uh, curious. Who is that? You know who that is. Stop it. And I'm pretty Billy. sure you saw the video too. Oh, Billy, the firefighter. Billy, yeah. yeah. Heathen, Billy, the firefighter. Oh. I thought he was the rebel or something. Billy from Philly. So were you guys fans of the Dead Rabbit version one? Not as much as the drop. No. Were you guys fans of the drop dead? Yeah. Uh, I didn't try the drop dead. Were you guys fans of the Dead Rabbit sub home tank? No. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it too. Um, I don't use it. I wouldn't use it. But for what it is, I gave it a decent review. Actually, you know what? Let me be honest. I did like it. I think the uh, um, Rebirth RTA beat it out ever so slightly. Well, RTA, you can't compare an RTA to yeah. a sub -ohm tank. As I mean, far as sub -ohm tanks oh, you go. Mean, oh, wait, wait, wait. The, uh, the, the uh, takes a real dead dumb, dumb sub -ohm tank? The dead the rabbit sub, -ohm sub -ohm tank. tank. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that was. Uh, bit off the mark okay the dead rabbit rta was pretty good um right. i'm of the we in we've talked about this on a thousand different shows i'm of the drop over dead rabbit school and i enjoyed the drop dead a lot 
However, <clears throat> here is a drop happening. Now, we haven't heard from Billy in a long time. Um, and people seem to be getting upset that he's popping up just for uh, just for product drops. So I'm curious. You if, know why that's happening? Because every time he comes back for a product drop, instead of saying it's a product drop, he says, I'm coming back and I'm going to be doing videos again and stuff like that. Dude, you don't owe anybody anything. So stop lying. Just come back and show your product off and then disappear. Yeah, but do, you, do okay, so Ooh, I'm playing. I I am of I've got a of I've a, well I'll talk about my view in a minute. But I'm curious. Um is it because he's saying that he'll do videos and stuff or shit, I forgot where I was going with this. Well, you know, let me just let me just clarify that it's like it's more just a general observation. I mean, I don't whether he does or doesn't make videos doesn't affect me um, personally. I'm just speaking specifically to if if he has a following and you know they listen to him and they miss his content and stuff, and then he you know will tease that he's going to be making more content to use that as some sort of a basis to build hype in some way. Then uh, it's a, it's a really shitty strategy. Uh, because people see right through that, but just just drop your product. You have you have clout. You've made good products. Um, there are going to be people that hate it, but you, I mean, well, so are you, you could, are you saying that you don't think that he'll actually like go through with what he said about doing advocacy videos and doing videos? Uh, uh, well, videos just based on like the the other product drops that I've I've watched. You know, I used to watch. Uh, Billy's videos, his reviews and whatnot. Um, I used to watch everybody's reviews back like before I got really plugged into the community and just started hanging out with the community and getting my, you know, vape time in that way. I used to watch his videos when he would drop something, you know, when he dropped the, uh, the caps for the dead rabbit um, and stuff like that. And th it was just like the, there was st a stifled period there where he just kind of fell out of it. Now we all do, we all understand that. I mean, he, he has a full-time job. Okay, and he's a family, and renovations happened, or he moved house. I mean, he has oh, a life, but just like just live your life. You don't need to live like you don't need to like be a secret closet YouTube celebrity or a vape celebrity and be a firefighter. It's just like well, so I was rock ask, on, bro. Be a firefighter. I was gonna ask if uh, can you really hold it against him because he's had like medical things and stuff like that, or are you just mad because he says that he'll do this and then he never does it? Like, like I'm uh, not upset. I just. <laughs> For my my opinion, my view is that his viewers would be upset with a false promise. Whether he cares or not, that doesn't matter uh, because that's not what what we're talking about. But I'm not angry. I but I do I do think generalist. I I can say where I'd be angry. Don't lie to me. If I was your viewer and just you were going to say I'm going to create content, then you're making a, a promise to me. You know, you're not promising, but you're promising. I'm a okay. content creator. I'm going to make you content. You've been totally, following me. You've stayed subscribed this whole time. You buy my products. I'm going to make content for you. And then you don't deliver. I'd be pissed. Yeah. I totally feel that. Cause, uh, I, I used to get in my head that, all right, I've got this set up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. And I've kind of stopped saying that, like saying those things on video because life happens and I got a busy schedule and sometimes I don't deliver on those things and it bothers me. Um, so like, like I say, I'm going to do this too, review. Stan. Huh? It bothers me too. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, so I stopped saying those things, but, um, I understand that he's got a product coming out and he wants to let people know about it. Um, if, if he wants to do his thing, uh, on his channel, and he wants to tell everybody, I agree, he should, like, do it. And I think that he should absolutely be doing advocacy and stuff like that. Uh, and he yeah. said that on his video. Um, Billy's a good guy. I've met him before. Uh, he's he's helped me out in the past. Um, so I have no ill feelings towards him. But um, at the same time, it just kind of – the timing sucks. You know, like, the timing sucks to, like, come on and – I'm back at YouTube. Here's a product drop at this time when we're, like, trying <laughs> – trying to push for flavors and stuff like that. So I hope, I really hope that he focuses on that a little bit and uh, there's a little pause. Well, there is a premeditation out. in planning and editing and produce dropping a pre-recorded polished video, right? So it's one thing if 
you know, we'll just use the president, for example, which could kind of tie into one of the articles that you shared. Um, do I have the quote up for him from him as well? But basically, uh, he backtracked because he was live recorded, you know, the president, like, we'll just use this as an example. Once again, sorry for getting distracted, but he came out in that first ban and he was very harsh with his words, clearly just like being Trump. I mean, he does this all the time. He just says what he says, but then he backtracks because in essence, yeah, he says random stuff that he probably should not say, or he's too harsh or he's not very eloquent with how he says it, but it's live. So I, I, I lend a little bit more leeway to somebody, um, in this situation, um, if it was a live video, I'd be like, okay, cool. Just backtrack. You know, sometimes I make promises to people cause I'm just excited in the moment, you know? Uh, but if you make a video, if you pre meditatedly, if you will, uh, record something and then put it out there, then you've, you know what your stance is. So you've thought it through and maybe he is just not thinking completely full circle or full spectrum here about what the climate is. <clears throat> Uh, but some, we know this, like we've been here the whole time, Stan, Nick, I mean, like we can't droll on about advocacy to, for two hours every week or on every show. Um, you know, we care about this. You guys know we do. Um, we know we do, which matters more than anything else. Um, but we have to create some fun content. Like we're, we're creating content here. We can't just talk about doom and gloom all the time. So did you see, have you seen the actual dead rabbit stuff? Have you seen the deck and everything? Uh, the v2 yeah no i'm just not interested Nick? have you yeah you put a video up today on it no i didn't well shows how much i pay attention to youtube all right well bro I, you've been sick i wish that especially with the circumstances and stuff that he would have like <laughs> wowed us you i know, got the I wish, black lung pop i wish that he would have like come out and just did something crazy different i mean i know he called it the dead rabbit v2 but just be like Here's a new RDA and wow, you know, like that would have been a lot cooler. Uh, I think call it he, the heathen. I think he wouldn't have got as much of he wouldn't be getting as much of a hard time as he is. Um, Dude, it makes oh, sense. But, you use dead rabbit bees. You're not around. Like you have to build your brand. If you put heathen on there, people would be like, oh, heathen, you know. But the people that are in the the community, but people generally in the mass market wouldn't know. You know, a real, like in a small font in the bottom, they're going to have to tie it in somehow. And and the success of the dead rabbit, of course, you're going to use that name. Let's be honest. But it, okay, how much clout does that name hold nowadays? I mean, he dropped the uh, dead rabbit subom tank, and honestly, it was kind of a big disappointment for the most part. I feel like uh, I'm not sure about as far as a commercial success it was a or failure. Thing. It wasn't a bad tank. It's just I don't. I feel like. It wasn't worthy of the Dead Rabbit name. If yeah, that but that's sense. the thing. The Dead Rabbit name has been beaten to death. Talk about beat a dead horse, beat a dead rabbit. <laughs> that's their marketing shtick, dude. They want to, doesn't matter what they put out. If it's a name that sold well, they want to keep using it. Absolutely. That's how it is. Um, but dead anyway. Dead Rabbit V16. Why rebrand when you can just add a V2? There's not a whole lot different. Um, in fact, there's not much different at all that he angled the post a little bit like the Yup did. Um, he yupped he, it. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, there's like yep. little, a little bit of a slightly deeper juice well and a slightly different angle on the airflow. And then I think he added uh, a honeycomb as one of the options for the airflow. That being said, do you think it's truly a V2 or more, more of a V1.5? V1.5. Just wait for Morton Owen to come out of the woodwork and be like, I could fix it. <laughs> he's going to, he's, <laughs> he's going to come out with an RDA that runs on uranium. He um, can't anyway. come back. Huh? He can't come back. Why? Because I have acquired his slogan. And I'm not <laughs> <doing that. laughs> What's the statute of limitations before you're allowed to steal somebody's 90 days. Somebody's <laughs> 90 uh, it doesn't days. matter. He's, he's international. Oh, so it doesn't count. That new topside thing, that SQ topside. What do you guys think about that thing? Ah, dude, as much I was super stoked about it when I first saw like teasers of it, and then I just saw a picture on Instagram, and I think it's ugly. I think it's Ooh. really ugly. I think that it's probably cool. It'll definitely hit hard. It'll definitely be quality because SQ makes quality shit. Brian, the Vapor Chronicles. 
innovated that. I thought it was going to be smaller. I was thinking like maybe an AIO like kind of system, something more innovative. I mean, it is, it is what it is, but like as a collab, as far as a collaboration goes, it's great, but I think it looks, <laughs> I, it's I, big. I, I, I'm not going to buy it. I, I'd like to hold my judgment till I get one in my hand, but um, for the size anyway, but I did see the same videos you saw and uh, it does look large. I think you got to kind of give it a little bit though, because if he's going to use that top squonk, top fill um, situation, there has to be room in the top of the mod for that, you know, absolutely travel over the top and everything. It's about, just what about you, Nick? Have you eye. seen it? Yeah, I saw a picture. What do you um, think? So what's the deal? It's just a uh, mech top fill squonker. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's mech, right? Looks like it's a mech. Well, this whole squonk section comes out and you can like replace it. And I think you can just make it a non squonk, right? Is that what it was? Because they swapped out. What did they swap in that video, Swags? They took the whole. Regardless hand. of any of that, it's ugly. <laughs> here, am I allowed? Or as to Justin Kendall said, it's fugly. Let me see. Let me see if I got the video here. Um. I think what was that in the F boys chat? Let me see. I Let don't know, see. but what all I can say is is that like what I loved about the 18650 SQ was it was just palmable. It was this tiny, perfectly fit, like perfectly machined. So everything just pressed in, like the doors and everything. Um Mac that hit hard. Um it had a nice form factor. There were no jagged edges. It had it just had thought and time behind it. I'm sure this does too, but they didn't think about making it as sexy as it could have been. I get it. It's functional. And for the purposes of it working, I'm sure that it's going to be great. And some people like it, bigger handed people, people that like long um, well, shaped not. things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to point out the fact that I purchased an SQ because – I really like their the like where they were at when they made it. It's a hundred percent in house. Everything is in house with SQ signature. Um, so that's kind of why I support them in that. I'm not sure about this project, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna have something that's outsourced. You know what else is modular? The billet box, and that's got a way better look and form and function. Uh, for, not function, but form factor. Sorry. I don't know where, where the video tag. went or else I would show it to you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I was just curious if you guys had seen it and your thoughts on it. Uh, I'll tell you what. I had a brilliant thought. You know what they should have done? And this is just because, hey, we're, we're commentators on the community. So I'm going to say it even though I don't have any credentials to do so. But... It's like they wanted to maintain this brand look SQ with the little, you know, finger grooves and everything like that. You know, I think that they should have maybe gone with their gut or just gone with a different idea for this brand for this brand collaboration. They're still SQ, okay? They can still have a great product, but it doesn't all have to be that same design. All right. So, here is the actual here we go. Here's the actual website website Website, picture, internet, bam. Window capture, select option, bam. Here we go. Done. Transition. This is it right here. This is the SQ top side. Um, this piece right here is the part that's interchangeable. This is the squonk bottle, I'm guessing. So I guess what he was doing was he was taking out like the whole section and replacing the squonk bottle. But I thought that I saw a whole half the section come off the thing. I guess I was wrong. Um, it is it is large, but it, it looks like it has. You said they went to China for this thing. I mean, is that true? Did somebody say that? Did I hear that or did I read that in the chat? I, I was just spitballing and kind of saying I, I'm suspecting that. It, there's something that's not that's outsourced that's not made in house but it looks like I don't the know. same style the same frame um it's a really clean look it looks just like the other sqs i bought an sq um i bought an sq and i was given an sq i have both of them still to this day i love the mod 
Um, the everything about the mod is just super super clean. So I'm sure that everything with this with this top side is going to be super super clean. Uh, I think they have kind of a standard that I don't think they want to give up. They don't want to give up for their name. Uh, SQ has a name for really nice stuff, and uh, that would be sad if they sacrificed that. So I I really want to get my hands on one and take a look at it. Uh, here's, it's here's made the in the Dove. It's made at the Dovepo uh, manufacturing. Yeah, that's what. Mm, I wonder said. what fit and finish is going to be like. It's not going to be SQ well, fit and finish. I have something that's. It's not going to be that. SQ price, is it? Probably. I do have to okay. say that the fit and finish on this is pretty freaking nice, bro. But okay, so there's a the, lot of parts in that, and the but the, those the battery part, doors, ugh. The part where you squonk it, right? It it seems very awkward because the, the hand grippy part is on the opposite side, so it's like you're you either have to push the bottle way at the bottom down here while it's in your hand, or um, you can't. It's not. It's a thumb squonker. Basically, I thumb fire I'm anyway, so I don't think that'll be an issue for me. But it's all. It just seems very awkward to me. They should have cut the door out a little bit more so you can. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have done it that way. That's all. I don't know. They did it that way because of that functionality, because of that removal process. I mean, you're right. They could have cut it out of the side instead and still had the same removal. I don't know. I don't care about it that enough. Saber that the Vapor, Saber the Vapor says there was two mods that TVC revealed, one with SQ and another that is like the Aegis Squonk. Interesting. Interesting. Um, okay. Well, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys what I'm vaping on real quick. Um, I got the Houston, Texas, uh, what's this thing called? Hexome, the Jeez. Vape Showcase 2019, the Spaceman you just Hexome did a show. How did the, you forget what a Hexome was called? With the ISO, dude, I forget what everything. Dude, you just, just did words. a show like an hour before this. And it's did words. The same thing. I just forget words, okay? I'll shut Except up. For that, the worst that Enya song that was awful. Sail away, you know sail away, sail away. So the, iso <laughs> the isolation um, tank, which is by far one of my favorite RTAs. Like, I love this thing. And if you haven't checked it out, you probably should. Because if you're a big air, big build kind of person, that thing is fantastic. From the airflow to the flavor to the juice capacity, it's awesome. I'm also rocking the Warlock's Dagger from... Uh, <gasps> What are they called? From Mark Clough, the uh, the Gathering the, the Vapor Gathering Lounge. Gathering Vapor Lounge with the OG recoil on top. I'm still rocking that. Um, I've also got the Thor V2. I pulled out my Thor V2 with my DLC uh, Prime on top of there. K-Fun Prime. And last but certainly not least, I am rocking the Stratum Ornament. I did a review for that. You guys should check that out. Uh, with the uh, Integra on top of that. Inside all of those, I am rocking Paramon. Bam. I am rocking Six and Out by uh, Bogan's Brews. And I am also rocking 5150 Detox. Yes, yeah, 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 sir. It is a crisp apple creme brulee. So that is what I got going on. Pear apple and uh some kind of funky flavor i don't even know what this six wait a second is. you said a crisp apple yeah it's a honey crisp apple creme brulee so, so, oh i'm so don't sorry. lie to the people i'm so sorry it's a all honey right i need i need everybody in the apple. room to raise your hand if honey makes or breaks a vape for you it's um, not no honey crisp honey is a and honey crisp apple. is different swaggins honey crisp apple no honey crisp honey crisp <laughs> Honey, honey, comma, crisp apple. Listen, honey, listen comma, here, honey, crisp apple. Oh my honey. gosh! Yeah, honey, crisp apple, creme brulee. You're from Massachusetts. What do you even know about apples? We have plenty <laughs> of apple orchards, kid. Plenty you want of to them. come apple picking? It's like come to the Shoba Valley, minutes. dude. I'll show you some fucking apples, kid. You should see the colors right now. Sorry, Boston. I forgot about this one. This the one I've been vaping beautiful. all day long is the, the foliage, turbo. the lay turbo on top of the pulse. Uh, I'm sorry, the Palm BF. Oh, uh, hi, Mark. Palm Plus. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm rocking all that tonight. Um, anyway, boom, let's get to the Twitter. Mark is in the house. What's up, Mark, bro? Dude, GTA hey. 5 tonight. Bam, bam. Gathering Vapor Lounge. 
Gathering Vapor Lounge. <gasps> Gathering Vapor Lounge. We need to have a chat about your decision. By the way, you don't get free high uh, quality up uploads of any of your videos or backups. He got the Pixel 4 XL. Yeah, you do. You get All unlimited right. no, you don't. Photo and video. No, no you do enough. not. Enough of the stupid phone talk. You don't. So, that promotion does not apply to that phone. New York Post put up an article called People Are Smoking Cigarettes Again Amid Vaping Related Panic. Oh! Scary, the one article scary. I didn't read. The one article that you didn't read. You sent me four Swaggins. articles, okay? You have failed again. You sent me four articles, and that was the least interesting and the least, you know. I want to uh, make sure the ads are showing. Hold on here. Because those right. are always great. Here we go. Okay, this is by Hannah Fishberg. Frischberg. Frischberg. I like her name better. Frisch, Fishberg. Frischberg. Um, hey, guess what? Antonio Brown floats new suspicions on why Patriots cut him. Okay, um... <clears throat> People are smoking cigarettes again amid vaping-related panic. In the span of a couple of months, smokers have begun to think of cigarettes not as cancer sticks, but a safer choice for a fix than vapes, users say. The dramatic shift comes as a vaping-related illness has exploded to become one of the biggest public health concerns of the year. The death toll from vapes has reached 34. I don't believe you 100%. Uh, I don't believe anybody because I just feel like they're pulling numbers out of their ass. And hundreds more have faced life-threatening sicknesses. This means that astonishingly, fears over e-cigs have converted vapors such as 20-year-old Delilah Cravens back to cigarettes even though the risks remain deadly. Within the people I hang out... Wait, what? Within the people I hang out with... That's a weird way to say that. There was a point where most of us were jeweling. I hate that word. That is, yeah, highlighted in red. That's the devil. And now most of us are back to cigarettes, the Kenyan College Junior tells the Post. Um, yeah, so basically this is a big deal. Um, the CDC has said things about vaping not knowing. Okay, here's, here's, here's something crazy. I'll put this link in the, um, in the description for you guys so you guys can check it out if you want to. Uh, basically, the CDC said... For the longest time, uh, I was on a show with Black Cat Whiteface earlier in the day. That was fun, the vaping hot tub. You guys should go check that out. But uh, the CDC basically said in September, I think he said, that they weren't quite sure what was causing it. They didn't narrow, they didn't narrow the vaping illnesses, vaping lung illnesses down to a specific product, okay? But then the head of the CDC, the head of the investigation is the lady that back in the middle of summer, like June-ish, one of the J months, she said, or maybe even May, I don't even remember. But uh, back then, she said that it was definitely THC-related. THC vaping cartridge-related. Cartridge related. Let's, let's change that. Bless you. <laughs> Illicit THC vaping cartridge-related. There we go. So, um... Yeah, the CDC is full of crap. Uh, if you are doing anything based on their information, you need to get more than one source uh, and go by that. You need to make a uh, make a decision based well, on. Think of, yeah, think about going to the doctor's office, you know, and the doctor tells you that you have uh, blood cancer. Oh, well, let's use my dad as an example. You go to one doctor, and the doctor says you have blood cancer, and you need to start a rapid. Uh, a regime or process of chemotherapy in order to, you know, start your way towards recovery or towards remission, et cetera. And uh, they didn't like that diagnosis. Um, and I mean, you can like it or not like it, right? But they went to another doctor at Dana-Farber, great, great facility over there. We're blessed here in Massachusetts to have some great medical facilities. And he went there and they said, no, you don't need to do that. Um, you know, it's smoldering basically is what they said. Um, we're going to, you know, monitor it. We're going to try you on some medication, not chemo related. Um, and that was about three, three or four years ago. And, um, he's still okay. You know, turns out a lot of the factors that he was feeling weren't related to, he went in feeling tired and logy and stuff like that. They found the blood cancer, um, that is smoldering, um, which is a good thing, but they found out he just has sleep apnea. So he did a sleep study and they gave him the mask and everything like that. But he does have, it's good that he went in, but 
The point is that he went to a second, he got a second opinion. So why can't we get a second opinion on our news as well? Like any news, this is the problem when you read just headlines is like, you're getting a portion. You're not really seeing what the difference is between one publication and another. There might be a, a completely different story being told. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that people are going back to smoking, which is what everybody feared. Um, I strongly encourage you that if you have any questions about vaping based on what you've heard and you decide to like stop, totally fine. Totally fine to stop vaping. Um, however, don't go back to smoking. Just don't. Even the CDC said that. Yeah. Well, don't go. They, Dr. Oz told me not to. Dr. <laughs> Oz is a POS. <laughs> Um, don't go back to smoking because point, for point, one, point. it's smoking and we don't want you doing that. I mean, you don't want to do that. Trust me. You, you, you know, deep in your heart, you don't want to do that. Dude, I and saw a guy two, at the gas station pick up three packs of cigarettes today because I was pissed because he was blocking the, he, he parked in the gas station, the pump, you know, the <laughs> pump right there that like, there's another pump right here and there's no car in front of me. He parks here, goes inside, comes out with three packs of butts. I thought to myself, you're an asshole for doing that, but also I have no desire to go back to that life where I come out of a store with three packs for the weekend, you know? Well, you also don't want to give them your money. Don't don't support them. Uh, I mean, just think about what you're doing. You're, you're supporting that. You're supporting all that. Um, it's exactly what they want you to do. And if you're spiteful like me, try to <laughs> say screw them and don't do it just because of that reason. For real. Uh, so... That, that, Screw that, big tobacco. It's happening. People are going back to smoking. It's just what they want. Um, it's, it's. We've talked about it a thousand times. It's false information. It's, uh, it's false news, and it's scaring people. And people are going back to smoking, and that's the worst possible thing that could happen. Uh, we don't want that, and I think they're absolutely terrible people for letting it happen. Honestly, um, but you know, they're they're in office just for money they don't give a shit about what we want but we're letting them know we're gonna let them know what we want and we're gonna let them know that we're gonna vote their ass out of office if they don't give us what we want so make sure you're prepared Which and registered to vote as well because that's happening soon and uh you really want to be a part of that savor the vapor uh, vaping will only get you pregnant if you do it between the hours of 9 p.m and uh 1 a.m okay so here we go <laughs> next article next okay, article. Serious, he said that dude can you well there's a perfect transition you're talking about voting and we have that one from the washington um post you want to read the washington post well i was just reading another because i was trying to find that's where uh they comment on trump's uh rollback basically they quote him which is pertinent information uh certainly contextual but i want to say this i found this uh grover norquist okay who's the president of uh Amer american for ta uh, americans for tax reform he says flavors are vaping vaping is flavors um he also declined to say whether or not he or his group have received funding from the e-cigarette industry um what that's just reporting at its finest um, he said, it is a vote moving issue in the same way being a homeschooler or a concealed carry. It's true though. I mean, there's a big enough group behind it and passionate enough about it. it the institutionalized is what they would probably, um, categorize it at as, uh, or whatever you want to say, but it's true. So basically this article is kind of breaking down. Actually, I did highlight it. Uh, it's breaking down the fact that Trump's aides and trump trump people trump camp people are saying he needs to back um back up on the whole vape ban thing with the elections coming up so that's why it relates to what you were talking about our vote does matter we're not just saying it because it's another catchy slogan we'll um, go over that right now i just want to point out michelle lynn doldime her disclaimer she put out for me disclaimer stan is not an obgyn this is absolutely 100 percent correct thank you very much um, don't listen to me about getting pregnant or any vaginal Vaping makes situation. <laughs> um, stop. Just stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So the Trump campaign urges White House to soften proposed vape, uh, flavored vape ban. I love this picture of all the people saying we vape, we vote with the T-shirts and the signs. I hope this is what's happening on November 9th. 
Um, President Trump's campaign manager, Brad Parscale, has privately warned the president. Okay, if it was privately, how do they know? Has privately warned the president that his plans to reduce youth vaping by banning flavored e-cigarettes could backfire in the 2020 election. Placing Trump's... I don't know if you guys have been doing this, but every single vote affecting Twitter uh, post, I have been tagging Brad Parscale as well as Trump. Um... Placing Trump's re-election campaign in the middle of the governmental de debate over a major public health issue. The political lobbying effort becomes at, wait, comes as the Trump administration is considering whether to continue allowing menthol and mint-flavored e-cigarette products, which would mark a major retreat from a proposed ban announced in September on all non-tobacco flavors, according to three pop three people familiar with the deliberations. Government data shows that nearly two-thirds of high schoolers were using e-cigarettes. Oh, my God, I hate those numbers. That's not true. Parscale has committed... Uh, dude, uh, one time, One time, one puff is not a user. Parscale has commissioned internal campaign polling to argue that Trump supporters who use e-cigarettes could abandon the president if he follows through on a ban, according to a person familiar with the effort who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss internal deliberations. Instead, this person said Parscale has suggested reframing that is that reframing. Oh, OK. I, I, OK, 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 I'm back. Reframing the issue away from flavors to other steps that the government can take to prevent youth use of the products, including a ban on sales of e-cigarettes to anyone under 21, a requirement that stores limit access by locking the products up and stiffer penalties for selling to underage consumers. Um, not going to read the whole thing. I will be putting that post, that link in the description as well very soon. Um, you're starting to see a lot more people like Brad Parscale is talking to Donald Trump and he's saying, look, let's just regulate this smarter um, because you could possibly be pushed out of office based on this one topic. I think that's awesome. Um, will it happen? I have no freaking idea. Does Trump actually care? Who the hell knows? Because that dude is nuts and uh, he might just do something to be spiteful. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, does has he been doing good things for the country my own personal opinion i feel like he has done a couple of good things for the country however i feel like he's psycho <laughs> i feel i feel like he's socially crazy um and you know what we're not going to get into our our actual opinions or whether or not we feel like the, the whole the whole point of this topic is is that we are being noticed we've said this before we're being noticed keep pushing keep being noticed because people are talking and they're talking privately in little chats they're having behind the scenes man maybe this is not such a good idea um and then you got crazy ass people like cuomo that just don't give a shit so just keep making loud noise and uh we will keep on getting in their ear and these conversations will happen and then they'll officially they'll eventually come to the forefront swaggins what are you trying to say i see you shaking your mod you got something no, I, I mean, I was thinking about a lot of things. I guess I'll go with the last thought that I had um, because it's provocative. Um, I think these kids need to um, need to grow a set. I don't know about anybody else here, but when we were kids, um, we had shit that we did that was illegal or, you know, not we weren't of age to be doing and we didn't get caught. Or if we did get caught, we didn't like we didn't turn it into this big thing where we lied um, you know, if we drank too much and had to get our stomachs pumped or whatever, and we lied and we said we were peer pressured or forced. I mean, I'm sure some people did it, but like, it's just like this constant, um, displacement of blame and responsibility. And also just the fact that these kids don't know how to do anything right because they've just been coddled and they're continuing to be coddled. This is our right though, to gripe about the younger generations, but it's true. Come on. I mean, I've watched kids like cheat blatantly in class, in, 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 a, in a classroom, in a, in a, in a school. And, so, and I'm like, dude, you, you know what you need to do? You need to like be less blatantly obvious about cheating. You know, maybe at least that way, if I catch you, I can show you a little bit of, I can respect you a little bit. Kids you know? aren't being at least taught how to learn. Kids aren't right. being taught they're, how to learn. They're being taught what to learn. Well, they're being taught how to take tests. Well, that's exactly. pretty much it. State state tests that need to be taken. Um, and also, I wanted to kind of follow up with that, Swaggins, and just point out the fact that when we were growing up, 
we didn't blame the teacher for us failing a class. And nowadays that seems to be the situation. It's like, why'd you fail my, my kid? Instead of yelling at the kid going, why'd you fail this class? Or even the parent being like, your kid needs to study more. But on that note of parent responsibility, right? Tie that in. I, I started, I started a hashtag, but I started using hashtag or posted a couple of posts yesterday about this, but I saw a resource officer article where it showed a picture of a resource officer speaking with some students, middle school students, or I don't know. I don't know what age kids are anymore. You know, for <laughs> human growth virus or pap- human growth papilloma virus. <laughs> I'm not an OBGYN either. That's why I don't know these acronyms. Um, um, basically, middle schoolers, high schoolers, whatever they were, but they're with a resource officer. And I was like, you know what you should be talking to these kids about? Yeah, sure. Don't do these things. But guess what? There's a consequence. You're going to get fined. If we find you with one of these, you're going to get a $100 fine. And so, and a lot of kids will be scared by that. The ones that don't want to get caught, right? Maybe give them some more incentive not to get caught because kids are going to do this stuff anyways. Not that we're condoning it, but it's just a fact. Um, no speculation there. But the kids that do get caught uh, of that aggregate, you're going to get kids that get caught once and have to pay that or have parents that find out about it and it's an issue and they're never going to get caught again because they're going to get grounded until next week uh, or next Or we'll just get smarter. But regardless, no, no, what I'm saying no is you get, the, you get where I'm going with this. It's just like it's it's a fair model, you know, for this process to, you know, unfortunately fines and money. It puts it puts a it puts a serious uh, pressure on parents to have a conversation with their kids like knock it off. You knucklehead, you're costing me money. I don't want to spend. There go your Jordans. <laughs> okay. So we talked about those things. There's one other thing I want to touch on that's happening in West Philadelphia, born and raised, not really West Philly, but Philly. Um, I'm sure Michelle Lynn will want to hear about this. She probably already knows. But there's one other thing I wanted to talk about that was actually in the Daily Pennsylvania. Um, The article says, Philadelphia introduces bill aiming to limit (coughs) e-cigarette sales to minors. Hold, please. <coughs> so, basically, this is probably one of the better articles. This is the good news article, okay? And I consider this a good news article because there's mother common sense behind it, and Chuck Norris backs it 100%. So, here we go. Philadelphia introduces bill aiming to limit e-cigarette sales to minors by Isabella Glassman. I just um, changed it, Nick. A new bill introduced Thursday in Philadelphia's city council could work towards limiting limiting underage access to e-cigarettes, CBS Philly reported. While e-cigarette... I'm surprised CBS reported this. This is good. While e-cigarette manufacturers like Juul... Juul, 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 Jeez, seriously. Claim their product is targeted toward adult attempting to quit... Adults attempting to quit smoking... Many assert that the intended audience is, in reality, teenagers. That's bullshit. Um, The new bill would substantially limit e-cigarette sales in stores that allow children and teenagers to enter, such as gas stations and convenience stores. These stores would have to limit their offerings to products with no added flavoring and no more than 20 milligrams of nicotine per millimeter of fluid. However, flavored and high nicotine products would still be available in specialized tobacco or vaping stores that do not allow minors to enter. We're basically saying that you can't sell those products ex- that you can't sell those products except in adult only facilities where children can't come in at all under 18. Philadelphia City Council member William Greenlee, who introduced the bill, told CBS Philly. I am totally 100% a okay with that. Um and if you guys are okay with that as well, make sure you guys tweet um what's his face Greenlee let me see, let me see, let me see. What was his name? Gabe. Council member William Greenlee. Make sure you guys tweet him and show support for the bill. Um, if you're in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania even, or hell, if you're just in Texas and you want to show support for the bill, this is common sense. Um, I'm going to put this article in the description as well. I think stuff like this is where we should be going. This is Absolutely. fine. This is what I've said a hundred yeah. times. Take the freaking, take the freaking vaping out of, 
the spots that have 16 year olds running the till and having to check IDs and stuff. 16 year old can work at any gas station, even if they're selling alcohol, even if they're, se well, is it 16 or 18? I don't care. They're kids and they don't give a shit. They just want a paycheck. So yeah, take it out of there where kids can actually buy that stuff and 18. put it only in vape stores. Dude, uh, Nick posted a link to uh, an article with a similar premise or similar theme in the sense that, so Kentucky, basically the headlines, Kentucky lawmaker pre-files bill to regulate vaping products, ban sales to minors. I mean, we see this or I see this and I'm like, yeah, no shit. You know, it's like, yeah, that makes sense, obviously. But I need to take a st step back from that because I've been living in it and just say, this is common sense. This is good. This is, the general public is so ignorant that this basic language to us is like they this is bible gospel to them because they need to hear this they don't understand you know this process so the problem with the, the article that i i sent to you guys in chat is uh that kentucky is considering a, an online ban as well so it's an online ban of sale uh online sale ban which can severely affect retailers and wholesalers. I'm not sure if it applies to wholesalers. There's not that clarification. I don't, it, it wouldn't apply to like stores, like brick and mortar out of purchasing. State. Yeah, but like it it's going to because they have a license for this. They can prove we need a. But I'm thinking that if it's within the state of Kentucky, for instance, Vapor Stockroom is based out of Lexington, Kentucky. If they couldn't sell their own products within Kentucky, that would be a massive issue because i'm sure they have plenty of business in uh, their home state uh, so that's kind of what i'm worried about there i mean Kentucky yes is the, a huge tobacco uh like there's tobacco farms everywhere these bills and all that are better than a full-blown ban yes um and i worry that sometimes it could be a bad thing because I worry about access because if people don't get vaping shoved down their throats, it, well, let me correct myself here. If smokers don't get vaping shoved down their throats at the gas station and everywhere else they go, then they're just not going to do it. So how often does a smoker just kind of waltz into a vape shop and just go, I just felt like checking it out. You know, I was, just in the neighborhood you know what though at least they'll have the option so i agree i and, agree and it's not saying that they won't be in store they won't be in gas stations and everything they said flavored vapor products won't be sold in gas stations which is and a 20 milligram cap in gas stations which is totally acceptable i mean that's more than acceptable that's that in my opinion that's generous so uh I for gas stations and stuff. I, I don't think the vaping stuff should be sold. I don't think cigarettes and stuff should be sold in gas stations. Um, well, I think there should be tobacco <laughs> like that'll stores. ever happen. Dude, no, where should cigarettes be sold then? A million years. Never Cigarette happened stores. in a million years. Tobacco shops only? The tobacconist. Well, a, dude, you can't buy liquor uh, well, where I live. You can't buy liquor anywhere but a liquor store. Yeah. All I can buy is beer at the gas station. So all I can buy is an under 20 milligram tobacco vape at a gas station. I don't see a real problem with that. Um, I mean, that's I, I would be totally 100% okay with that if my state did that. Um, I agree, but I just have to play devil's advocate. Yeah, no, semantics. I'm not I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying, like, that's okay with me. Uh, Saver the Vapor said the government shouldn't have to raise your kids. I 100% agree. I'm not, I'm not saying they should. I don't think they should try to raise your kids it's not about having to or should have to it's about the government should have the least amount be. of power as it possibly can to run that's how i feel about it the government whenever it gets involved in anything it it screws it up so let's just not get it involved like let it help us to regulate things that are you know state to state uh and then outside of that let us deal with it through due process of law and us voting it things into action, us determining what what's an emergency. I think that we can all say that a hurricane or a monsoon or a, a typhoon or a national disaster are all emergency uh, opportunities, but unsubstantiated. Smallpox, smallpox outbreak right. is a CDC situation. Well, that's an um, that's an epidemic. That's by definition that's an what epidemic. an epidemic is. Right, bird flu, SARS, like that stuff is stuff CDC should be getting involved in. This this situation is a drug is a DEA situation, in my opinion. 
The rest of it doesn't matter. All this other BS has started because of people overstepping bounds and saying things in main media that they shouldn't be saying. Go ahead. The key to what you just said there, Stan, is the E, the enforcement. Enforcement! <laughs> we need enforcement of laws. These laws are already in place. We need enforcement of them. We need to find out the kingpin of these drug rings who are making these well, THC cartridges in a condo that their mom bought for them in Minnesota. Let me put my tinfoil hat on. I actually literally did that last Sunday. I literally I put a my tinfoil on. hat on. I got to move over it. to the bar. I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on. We all know, everybody knows your name. We all know how <laughs> the, um, the war on drugs has gone. It's it's a losing war. They will never win. Uh, we need Ronald thing, Reagan back. The whole thing is a waste of money. Uh, I'm sorry Reagan. for all the people that work in that, you know, the DEA agents and all that, the police and stuff. I, I, and you know what? I have a feeling that they know that it's a losing battle. They know that they will never win. They'll never be out of a job because of the situation. Drugs will always be there. Here's the thing. If you are a drug enforcement agent, if you're not one of these radical, crazy antis, or you're not one of these psychopath uh, people that is just overly morally adept, is that the word? Anyway, the, about, oh, weed is bad, and all this other stuff. If you are a DEA agent, you're anybody that has any experience, you're anybody that understands the situation, you understand that marijuana is probably the least of your worries when it comes to any drugs that you should be trying to enforce, right? Seriously, in my opinion. Now, absolutely. I mean, hell, all the cartels and everything, they've moved on to, you know, heroin and all kinds of things because, with uh, anyway, fact of the matter is, is that do you think that they treat these THC cartridge situation like they do with a decriminalized pullover for like pot? So, like, like it's it's just weed. Like a lot of cops will like let you go, or they'll give you a ticket or whatever. Um, at where I live, I think I think it's been decriminalized down to a ticket at a certain amount, but they'll still arrest you. Uh, anyway, it, it doesn't matter. I don't even care. It's not like I need to know. Um, but are you? Do you think that they overlook that stuff because of the situation that is THC related? And it's not like heroin and everything. And nobody. Like the CDC or nobody has made them understand how serious of an issue that it is. If you want to get, if you want to speculate, which is what we're doing. I um, said tinfoil hat time. Yeah, speculate. So basically, if you are, if you're pushing an agenda or a narrative, you're so focused on making sure or putting out fires for that, making sure that that's maintained, making sure all of your fronts are maintained um, and the message is maintained you're not focusing on that other thing until it becomes, you know, it's in your peripheral, but everything's in your peripheral because you're trying to forge ahead to the goal. You're trying to like crunch things through into, you know, destroying an industry to be able to make a market out of it. I don't know. I don't think like a tyrant, but this is tyrannical kind of behavior uh, in this mindset. That's what I think. Well, so, go they're, ahead. Not, was... they're not worried about it until it becomes too big to not worry about. I was just going to say that we fought for states' rights. We wanted states' rights where a state can make its own set of laws. And this is kind of the consequence of that and the fact that you can have national laws, which are like the big laws. You can have all these agencies set up to target certain things, the CDC, the FDA, the DEA, all that which is all well and good. But as soon as one tries to tweak their amount of control and power, and that includes the states, then things get all, all out of whack. So we need to bring back the checks and balances. We need to you know, make sure that not one person can just completely ban an entire industry in one day, <laughs> Charlie Baker, and make yeah. sure that if that does happen, they are held accountable for doing so and justice shall be sought. Yeah, let's do a quick let's do a quick uh, lesson on uh, ebonics. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, basically, uh, 
government, right? Government, the way it works, president, his cabinet, all that stuff, Supreme Court, Congress, we might like make that smaller and then put that in every state. So it's more just like we have more of a direct influence on what how we're being governed. And like, like Nick said, the government part is the big, big policies, you know, amendments to the Constitution, stuff like that. But we're all applying the Constitution state by state. So it just gives us more access or easier access to things that affect us more directly um, in the day to day. So, yeah, state officials, those are the people that always be up on what they're what they're doing, following them on their social media because they love to just post about everything and then stay informed about where you can be and how you can vote on things. Speaking of that, Massachusetts, if we're breathing a sigh of relief uh, because word came in um, that basically the appeal didn't go through and Charlie Baker and the state of Massachusetts has to come up with a way to really make, I'll let you embellish more, Nick, but let me just get to my point, right? So the point is, is that, sorry, I'm trying to get myself on track. Sorry, everybody out there. Go, you know, go. I'm drinking, I'm drinking that raspberry mead tonight, feeling <laughs> like a Viking. And I just want to go, you know, conquer some, uh, never mind. So basically, uh, we're getting to Monday. Monday is the date that they have to get everything in by to be like, this is a legitimate ban. This is a legitimate emergency. Um, and basically we were all bright, breathing a sigh of relief to say, all right, well, Monday is going to come. They can't possibly do it, but there's new news out saying that they're pushing for it, that it's, it, they're going to have something to announce on Monday. So we may still very well have a ban. That's why we continue to be informed and continue to fight because they're doing it. They're pushing the news. They're, they have the power. We have to stay one step ahead of them. Sorry. Just so you guys are aware the um the united states elections 2019 are on november 5th okay all your your state voting and everything is november 5th so make sure you guys are registered to vote before that november 9th is the rally but november 5th is the actual voting um, isn't isn't that guy fox day guy, guy fox day yeah I, don't I have know. no idea. Remember, remember the fifth of November? No, no. I think it's the eleventh. Um, I think there's an extra couple syllables in that. In Just that make sure you understand where you're where you're at with your uh, voter registration and when your state voting actually is, and where a voting um, where a place you can actually vote at is at. Make sure you understand those things. Um, and make sure you're getting after those state officials on Twitter and everything and calling them uh, because th th it's getting real close. It's getting real close, like two weeks. So make sure you guys understand that it's a big deal. And if you're not participating, Go you can't bitch England. about it later on. <laughs> um, okay. So we spent an hour talking about advocacy and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to go into some other fun things. All right. As you guys know. Halloween is in six days. It is. We won't even have another stew before Halloween. So this is now becoming, from here on out, the Halloween vape special. Uh, oh, shit. I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> so here's the deal. In spite, not in spite, in lieu, not in lieu, um, because we are having the Halloween Vape special <laughs> this evening, um, I want to find out a little bit about what scares the hell out of the Vape Stew panel. So, I need th three things that scare the crap out of Nick Bissett. Three? Yeah, three. All at once? Okay, yes. number one, the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> be be truthful. Give me like your actual fears. Uh, I really don't like the dentist. <laughs> okay. I mean, I my well, they were taking my blood pressure or um yeah That's blood pressure. Me, it was one sixty over one hundred, <laughs> and they look at me. They're like, "You nervous?" I'm like, "Uh huh." <laughs> <laughs> but uh. I'm not really scared of much. I'm not scared of clowns. I'm not really scared of spiders. I'm I'm scared of like abnormally sized spiders, I would say. Like if they're like big, like big, the bird spider in Australia. That that's pretty scary. That's pretty scary. 
Um, I'm afraid of drowning. Really? That's yeah. That's high on you, my list. Do you go in deep parts of the pool? Yeah, I don't mind anything where I can like touch the bottom or swim and touch the bottom. But like anything where I I know there's no way I can go all the way to the bottom and come back up and live. That's like in the scary. ocean. The the just vastness of the ocean is terrifying. So like if you jumped off a boat in the middle of the lake, you would kind of freak out a little bit. Depends on how deep the lake is, but. Yeah, basically, like, yeah, that's a pretty deep lake. Um, <laughs> yeah, anything if I'm just dropped in the middle of the, like water, body, any body of water, um, that's pretty, pretty frightening. And it, I mean, if it was like I fell off a boat that's going to swing around and pick me up, it's not a big deal. But I'm just saying, like, I'm just floating in the middle of the ocean with no exit strategy. It's pretty you terrifying. Know, um, if you're in a body of water that is... I don't remember. Um, I don't remember how deep it is. Like, if you're in a body of water that is pretty deep where you can't touch, but uh, there's a survival technique that will help you. There's two survival techniques. One, you can take off your clothes, like your jeans or whatever, and you can soak them in water, and you can actually fill them with air and use them as a flotation device. If you soak it in water, the surface tension actually will hold air inside of it. So that's a that's a t- um, like like when we go offshore, we have overalls. They teach us how to use them as a flotation device if we ever fall overboard. Um, and then there's another there's another survival technique that have you ever seen a bobber go up and down in the water? If you're in a body of water where you could actually I don't know 20 feet deep or so, and you're having to if you get to the point where you're so tired that you can't swim anymore, you just basically you go under the water until you touch the bottom holding your breath and then you kick off to the top you take a deep breath you float and then you go back down all the way to the bottom you just do that over and over and over because is that, that a fear of yours that's a fear of his oh you're are you solving one of his fears right now no 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 i was just giving fear him, busters i was giving him a couple of uh, a couple of survival Strategies. techniques that i learned in my offshore training yeah lay on your back do the dead man's float <laughs> anyway I don't float for some reason. Swaggins. Interesting. I think it's your beard. Weighs you down. Shaving Nick's beard in the middle of the night. Do you ever freak out about that? That some asshole that's drunk at a show might shave your beard or cut off like a little lock of the hair? And clone you? You weren't until now. No, but now I am. So, (laughs) note to self, get my own room from now on. (laughs) Don't share a room with me. I'm not even going to do it. I'm just going to... I will I'm light you gonna, on fire. I'm just going to wait till you fall asleep and then turn my beard trimmer on. I'm going like right to fill a pillow bag <laughs> full of bars of soap and beat you the shit out of you. better bring the bib at least. <laughs> wait, um, bars of soap and hit me with it like in full yeah, gonna, jacket? <laughs> no, I'm going to fill a pillowcase full of bars of soap. Oh, my God. Beat the shit out of you. So Swaggins <laughs> is about... Dude, that's brutal, bro. I know. What the I know. That's so Swaggins. evil. Jesus. So now that Swaggins is in the middle of the ocean, um, what are you scared of, Swaggins? Give me three. Like, true, true, like, we'll scare the crap out of you kind of scared. Um, I guess, like, that's the thing. I was trying to think about that, like, the difference, because someone said spiders and, like, big spiders or ones that you know are the ones that will fuck you up. Like, they creep me out, but, like, I could manage that. I'd say if sharks for sure. What's behind me, like a, like great whites, I think. But you can attribute a lot of fears to memories because I've never encountered a shark. I've just associated a fear because that's their element, man. If you're in the water and there's a shark, I think it, it's twofold because of me being a like I've had a fear of water that I can't see, like the bottom. You know, I've tried to get over that fear as well or conquer that. I'm not nearly as bad with it, but. I'd say a fear that is legitimate that I haven't overcome is needles. Like I'll get a shot or whatever, but my blood pressure goes through the roof. I can't handle it. I don't know really? what that associates with, but like it does, the pain doesn't bother me. It's just like needles. I see them. I, it's just like it, for some reason it gets me going. So I, a tattoo would freak you out? No, I'm sitting like hypodermic needles. Like you're right. going in. I, dude, I'm 100% with you on that. Like I can get tattooed. Yeah, I don't day. mind that. But a hypodermic needle, like, penetrating your flesh is just... 
don't ever go to the doctor with my cousin because that will scare the shit out of you. Ugh. That fool giggles like deadly creepy clown giggles whenever they give him a shot. Speaking like, of clowns, <laughs> another fear is unicycles. <laughs> I mean, do they not creep anybody else out? Like, have you ever seen just what seen one? It just it doesn't make sense. No one in their right mind would ever like ride one of those for function. And like, when someone does ride them, they look like they're possessed. Like, I I think that I think the devil tried to create a bicycle because he was jealous of God and how he created the bicycle and it was perfect. And he tried to create one and it became just it came out one, you know, with a seat on it. And it was just awful. And everybody that rides them are devil worshipers. So that's why I'm deathly afraid of unicycles. What about you, Stan? Um, I have a couple. Falling, like, uncontrollably scares the hell out of me. Uh, I've been in a couple... Like, I was in a roller coaster one time where the shoulder strap came up and I was so small that, like... I See actually, cucumbers. like it came up and it locked. And when the roller coaster went upside down, I actually went up and like started slipping through and I had to grab on as hard as I could. That scared the crap out of me. Um, Sorry, uh, Stan. I need to interject. What? Slender man. I should have added slender man. No, no, no. He's slender a, he's man. A weenie. creeps me the fuck out. He's a weenie. But, um, the like, falling uncontrollably scares the crap out of me. Like I'm one of those guys that if I went into that little room that's hanging out over top of a 30 story building, that's all glass, you know, and you're standing on the glass, that's kind of creepy to me. Um, like hanging over the edge of a building is kind of creepy to me. Injuring my spine scares the hell out of me. Don't ask me why. Um, that's even a thought, but I have a cousin that's a, uh, uh, a paraplegic. And it just, that's, that's something I've always been a fear. I've always had a fear of, I've always had a fear of injuring my spy spine and having something, uh, drag across my eyes or something and cause, cause me blindness though. That's like bodily injury wise. That's the biggest fears I have. And then <laughs> my final fear that really scares the crap out of me is like, I'm a, I'm a paranoid person. I'm, I'm just am, um, that usually comes with highly anxious people and, my kids, like especially my daughter, going to a store or whatever and turning around and she'd be gone, not being able to find where my kids are, <laughs> scares the living hell out of me. That shouldn't make you laugh. That is a scary Sorry, no, I'm, not, I'm fear. laughing. Hold on. Sorry to take away from the serious mom, but Lando says, I'm going to summon a big dick demon <laughs> to come to Nick's room when he's sleeping like Jonah Hill. And shave his beard. <laughs> <laughs> it just got me, man. Thank you, Lando, for that break from that anxiety-inducing story from Stan. Lando, no, but like, yeah, though, uh, uh, uncontrolled falling, injuring my eyes or spine, and not being able to find my kids in a crowd. That scares the Jeez. hell out of me. Um, and I'm already blind, so. You ever had a dream where you've, like, woken up in a car, or you're in a car, and no one's in the driver's seat, but for some reason, like, you can't get into the driver's seat, and it's just driving super fast and you're worried that you're going to crash no but i've had really weird dreams about falling and like situations where i can, can i can do something to get out of the situation but no matter what i try to do it doesn't work <laughs> and i end up like like if i was in the car like not not having a, an idea right off the top of my head but if i was in that car it would be like i'd be in the driver's seat and all i have to do is hit the brakes or throw the car in neutral, and no matter what I did, it wouldn't work. Like that's the kind of dreams that I have. Um, dreams where you don't, you can't have control no matter what you do. I, dude, I can't tell you when I, I, I can't remember the last dream that I had. I used to get in dreams. Uh, I, I, I was always in contact sports, um, football, hockey. Uh, I wrestled for a long time, and I always had these dreams with a fighting. Uh, and one time, I remember specifically, I was in class. And I was asleep at my desk like this, just both elbows here. And I guess I had my arms perfectly positioned to where like it wasn't, you know, I, I held myself up and I was asleep. I was dead asleep. And I had this dream that I was fighting some guy and he got a jab through and it whipped my head back. 
And I swear, this is a true story. I'm sleeping like this and it's dead quiet. Everybody's like studying or taking notes or something like that. And I went, boom, <laughs> smacked my freak forehead right on the middle of the desk. <laughs> and the whole class is like turns and looks at me and it's like I got this huge red mark right here where I slammed the shit out of my head. I got punched in my dream. It was like boom. <laughs> I'm very I'm very physical in my dream. Don't like, hit me. I'll hit me. <laughs> 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 the real kicker would be if you knocked yourself out by doing that and just went. Well, I got to tell you, like with Halloween coming up and everything, I don't get scared by creepy clowns. I don't get scared by the, the, the dude. The whole zombie dead baby thing is just nasty to me. Like Zombie the, dead baby. Yeah. At the Halloween stores, they're everywhere. It's really gross. Oh. Um, I don't get scared by monsters and things like that. Excuse me. Um, However, that stuff just grosses me out. Um, true fears, ooh, in my opinion, our fears are things that could actually happen. Things that I'm actually scared of, like that happen every day in public. That's the kind of stuff that really scares me. Uh, I'm a realist kind of in that sense. Realist. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Dude, did it, you say you're the realist? You're the real Evanescence? Yes. I'm the real Evanescence. Oh, sail dope. away, sail away, sail. <laughs> no. Is that Evanescence? Is that the no. wrong song? Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so, Nick, you probably don't have it today in the vape shop, do you? Well, I mean, I have a mini one. It's not yeah, he worth post, a bumper. He posted. He posted it. It's not worth worth a bumper, but um, to go on Swaggin's fear, we did see a guy riding a unicycle down the street, and it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man, that and reptilians, two unsolved mysteries. Uh, that would be an interesting episode. I'd watch that. <laughs> King Tot has the best dreams ever. I'd watch that. Dude, King Tot said that he was afraid of sea cucumbers. Um, and then his reason for why, he said, wait, like wet penetration or something. <laughs> I was like <laughs> reading it backwards, though, in the chat. I was like, moist, oh, moist penetration, moist no. Penetrate, King? and then he said, "See cucumbers freak me out." What I just saw was he said, "I dream of Falcor. I'm riding Falcor and having a pineapple pizza and a Coke Zero. <laughs> that sounds I miss like you, an King amazing Tot. dream. That sounds like an amazing dream. Te extraño. One vape at a time. Says, anybody ever have a dream where somebody's trying to kill you and you get straight up noodle arms? <laughs> Is that like chicken arms? Noodle arms. Show them the noodle arms. And you can't you can do, do shit to defend yourself. <laughs> that's that spaghetti would, arms man dude that would suck that would suck noodle arms are above the head um miranda hey miranda what's up oh miranda shit Jones, miranda. haven't seen you in a minute she says i have a reoccurring dream i've had <laughs> lando says vegans scare me miranda says uh i have a reoccurring dream i've had most of my life i'm always being chased by something at a family reunion at my grandpa's house and no one can hear or see me right before i see the thing i wake up Dude, those are the scariest dreams when you never actually know what's freaking you out um, and you never actually see it. That That is scary. That is absolutely scary. Disembodied farts. Like, <laughs> you know, Shorty. when you're home alone and someone lets one rip, fudge. Bob Shorky said, that's what your <laughs> wife says. Stand away, stand away, stand away. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate that. Stan pooped his pants. Uh, <laughs> Stan poops his pants a lot, apparently. Yeah, you know, that seems to be a rumor going around. <laughs> we should just title this. this uh, he spit his I didn't, all I didn't, over I didn't, That was a perfect spit take, by the way. <laughs> go home, swaggin'. Suppose oh, I, I crap my pants. Um, Oops, I crap my pants. All right. Well, it's 1030. Who wants to come up with the this or that question? Nicholas. Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas. All right. So while Nick looks for a this or that question, I want to ask Vapor Swaggins, what are you going to be for Halloween, Vapor Swaggins? I think I'm going to go as Donnie Darko. What is that? It's just a, it's basically a skeleton onesie with a gray hoodie and some sambas or whatever those shoes are called. That's and, so uh, lazy. And that way my face is free so I can... Um, uh, drink lots of diet coke and vape. 
You should go as a member of the Blue Man Group. Are you saying that because I'm bald? No, oh, I'm saying God. that because it would be awesome. They wear bald caps, you know? Yeah. It's really, have you ever seen them live? Ooh. This is a little off topic. I have a, a this or that. Um, but have you ever seen the Blue Man Group live? Yeah. Yes. No. I've it's seen, right across I've seen, from Chippendales. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen their act on the internet. I've seen their live performances. I just haven't seen them live. Because when they sign stuff, they like wipe their head and like <laughs> put a thumbprint on your like playbill thing. That That's you get. awesome. Yeah. They don't, and they still don't talk after the show. They don't talk at all. They just like. That's awesome. You know what? That's the best thing and it's timeless because you can have new members and no one would ever know. That's you exactly know? what's going on. It's like That's... the Dread Pirate Roberts. Yeah. That's they awesome. They put on a good show. Robert Riggin so, re- reminded me. Hold on one sec, uh, Nick. Robert Riggin reminded me of a dream that I constantly have that I I've kind of forgot about. Um, I still to this day have this dream, and it doesn't matter what's happening. The dream is never the same. The situation is always the same. Um, he says, "Cocking back for a punch, and the fist only moves half an inch per hour." Uh, I have this dream, and that reminded me of this one that. It doesn't matter what the situation is. The situation's actually pretty much always different. And either I'm running for somebody or I need to catch somebody or I need to get somewhere as fast as possible to make something happen. <laughs> and what happens is is it feels like there's 50 or 70 pounds of weight tied to the back of my ankles. And, like, I'm trying to run and I'm grabbing the ground and I'm pulling the ground. And it doesn't matter. Like, it's just so <clears throat> slow and it takes forever and I never get to where I'm going before I wake up. It's, it's, just, that sucks. That's a shitty feeling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like, well, similarly, it's just, it's, it's a sense of like not having control as a part of it. Like, I re- you read into that stuff. By the way, I was laughing at Sasha saying, just move to any Slavic country. We don't have dreams. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Check your dreams at the door. I can't. You guys kill me, man. I can't help it. <laughs> so here we go. It's time for that. This daily vape TV. Is there a bumper or no? I already did it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so let me. I've got to make sure I get this right because I have it in my head. Would you rather have horrible nightmares every single night? And remember them like horrible nightmares every night. And you remember them vividly the next day or amazing dreams all the time. You can fly, you can do whatever you want and never remember them. That's I'll go first. That's easy. I choose the latter, not the former because I feel like, the nightmares and wake up and remember them vividly is just two times awful. Yeah. Because you're going to be stressed out in your dream. You're going to wake up stressed out. I'd rather not remember what I'm dreaming about, but wake up feeling great and refreshed every day. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. So that's my choice. Thank you. Lando says he's going to be vapor swagons for Halloween. Sweet. Your dog <laughs> can bite you on the nose too. It's, that's all you got to get that and a <laughs> twisted messes hat and some glasses beard. Um, I, I'm the same. I'm going with sleep great, have good dreams, not remember them. I don't need to remember them. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to be – like I think that I think that if you have nightmares and you remember them vividly every single night, it would put you in a pretty crappy mental state. And uh, I don't – like during you – know, while you're awake, and I don't want to be – I don't want to deal with that. So that's where I'm at. What about you, Nick? <laughs> I like <laughs> actually that that's a really good point. Uh Stephen Sard says it depends. I mean, if I'm a horror writer, that shit is gold. <laughs> I mean, dude, dude, that it's is true. Dude, Stephen King, like I bet that's his scenario. Um Yeah, I'd probably go. I, I didn't really think this one through that much. I, I'm not good at these. And I he put see me it on, on your spot, face. So. It was worth it yeah. though. I mean, it was a good question, but it was just an easy answer. Yeah, I feel like uh yeah, I guess I'll have good dreams and not remember them. Well, let's put it this way. I typically don't remember my dreams. And when I do, it's either a really good one or a really terrible one. Yeah. 
and it's it's really there's a way like, to practice there's a way to practice lucid dreaming there's i i watched like uh some my wife was watching some documentary on it so you can get in the mindset of being able to remember things like and waking up and writing them down and stuff like that so i can lucid dream and when i do i typically remember it so the key to lucid dreaming is look at your hands that's it look at your hands or imagine well, there's two ways. I mean, I've heard other people use like imagine a bouncing ball and focus on the bouncing ball. And the second you realize that you made that bouncing ball appear, then you're in control. But honestly, the way I've done it always is look at your hands. It's kind of like when you're in a video game and you look straight. Is that down. what you do like in between customers at work? Yeah. Are, are you like, be like, okay. Your brain is basically, you know, the new Tron movie. Like the, basically the premise for the new Tron movie, you, you go inside of there and you created a uh, clue and he helps you to build out this city in your mind. Dude, this is a great idea. So I'm going to write this down. <laughs> Sasha Barrick says it's 530 a.m. over here. Dude, you are staying up to finish that amazing new tank, I'm sure. Dude, Sasha. Finish that amazing new tank. No more, and no then more send prototypes. Us, bro. And then send us the prototypes for testing. Yeah, send me the prototype send it to for me. testing. Screw those guys. Send it to me. <laughs> I have no appreciation for anything. Well, other that's than... when you're going to get the most fair and honest review. I'll Make tell sure you what. I'll tell you what, Nick. You can have you can have a prototype for testing if you can tell me what the name of it is. It's the Theatro. Damn it, Swaggins! I asked Nick. Doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't have to know. The less I know about a device, the better off I am reviewing it. Uh, <laughs> spoken like a true full of shit person. <laughs> <laughs> to write about here. That's how full your eyes aren't quite brown. <laughs> All right, guys. Green. Well, I think we're going to call it early tonight. Yeah. You guys want to call what? it early tonight? No. Well, I, well I mean, we almost didn't have it. Show, bro. Huh? All right. It's in the next half an hour. We'll be filled with vapor swaggins time. Well, oh, you guys both want to leave. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to go play GTA five. <laughs> Well, I got oh, some stuff I need to take care of, and I thought you that do Nick... after show on my Twitch. Yep, sounds after good. Show we actually on talked Twitch. about this before. Yep. Nick, what is yeah. uh, what is your Twitch? Why don't you give it to us? Let's do this. Oh wait, is this a bumper? No, tell <laughs> us what Twitch. your Twitch handle oh. is. <laughs> my buzzed. Twitch is slightly buzzed. Twitch.tv slash slightly buzzed. I'll be streaming live second this video ends. I'll be up there. And we'll be playing some GTA 5 with uh, Mr. Vapor Swaggins and possibly others. Maybe Anybody who maybe, wants to uh, jump on, we're on Xbox. Let's do maybe this. Michelle Lynn, if anyone's on Xbox, you're you're more than welcome to. Dude, we'll populate a city and we'll kill Michelle Lynn for like two hours. Oh, <laughs> She's my arch enemy in GTA 5. I, th I find that hilarious. I know, H-Town Vapes. I'm trying to check it out, brother. Uh, go Astros. So here's the deal. Make sure you guys are calling 202-456-1111 and 202-456-1414. Make sure you guys are calling those numbers. Make sure you guys are talking to your representatives. If you are going on November 9th, I will see you there. Um, regardless of what happens, let's be respectful. Uh, let's make sure that we're doing our part to make the the community look good. Um, and yeah, if, uh, swag is, you have anything else you want to say? <laughs> yeah. Thanks for hanging out guys. What a great time we all had. All right, guys. Hey, lucidrda.com still running the 40% off and the 25% off sale, 40% off things designed by Stan with code black October, 25% off with code. Get it now. Um, it's only going for a little bit longer. It's over Sunday. So I think that maybe it shuts off at midnight. I don't know. You guys should get there quick and check it out, though. Uh, you guys stay safe. You guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And remember. Oh, I had new news. The, the Vapes Bobby 2 Dave, is pushing the same. itself. The, the Vapes 2 is pushing itself forward an hour. We're going to be doing. Uh, it's going to be ten uh, or an hour earlier every day. <laughs> what? Go to bed, Swaggins. I thought what? you were ending the show and I had to get it out before you ended it. I didn't. I didn't even hit the button. I was waiting on you to get some kind of profound, oh. amazing thing out. And yeah, entirely... all right. Well, then this. In that case, we're gonna we're gonna Bye. do it earlier. That's what. <laughs> <laughs>